What's up you freaking geniuses? So in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to find the distance from a point to a given line. All right, so let's do this example right here. So this one says, find the distance from point A to the given line, all right? So the line it gives us is right here. Y is equal to three X. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do is just graph this. And nice, simple little way I always like to graph lines is just by making the little x, y table, all right? So here, let's plug in a zero and a one for x, okay? So if I plug in a zero for x right here, I'm gonna have three times zero, which is just zero, right? So we're gonna have y is equal to zero. Uh, let's draw a zero, okay? Now, uh, what if I plug in a one, okay? Well, if I plug in a one right here, we'll have three times one, which is just three, right? So we'll have y is equal to three. All right, so we got two points right here. That's all we need to graph a line. So our first point is at zero, zero, and the other one is at one comma three. Okay, there's our two points, and we can draw a straight line. All right, easy enough. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is just graph our point right here. That gives us point A. So that's at negative one, seven. So negative one, seven is right there. Okay, so this is point a, and again, this is at negative one comma seven. Okay, now in order to find the distance from this point to this line right here, we have to take into account the shortest distance. Okay, so the shortest distance from this point to this line that we just graphed would be something like this, okay? And the special thing about this type of line is that it always creates a perpendicular angle with this other line right here. Okay, so these two lines right here are perpendicular. They create a 90 degree angle. Okay, so in order to find this distance right here, there's two things we need. We need to figure out what the slope is, and we need to figure out what this point is right here where the two lines intersect, okay? So first of all, let's find the slope, okay? Well, first, let's actually find the slope of this line right here. What's the slope of this line? Well, we can take it from this equation right here, okay? So remember, we can use our slope-intercept formula to make things a little bit easier. Y is equal to mx plus b, okay? So this formula is basically already in this form, right? It's basically y is equal to three x, right? And then we, I guess, technically have a plus zero at the end, if you wanna fill that in. Okay, but in either case, m is our slope, right? So here, the slope of this line, y is equal to three x, is equal to three. Okay, so the slope is equal to three. Now, if you wanna find the slope of a perpendicular line, which is what we wanna do, right? We wanna find the slope of this line. All you have to do is take the opposite reciprocal of this line, of this slope right here, okay? So this slope is equal to three, right? And we can also write that as a fraction, right? We can write it as three over one. So if we wanna find the slope of the perpendicular line, let's write that down. So the slope of the perpendicular line is going to be equal to, again, the opposite reciprocal, all right? Now, when I say opposite, I mean opposite sign, all right? So since this one is positive, then the perpendicular one is going to be negative. Okay, and then you just take the reciprocal. So three over one would be one over three. Okay, so the slope of this line right here is negative one third, right? Now we need to figure out what the equation of this line is. So then we can find this point right here. Okay, so again, we need to plug it into this equation right here. Y is equal to MX plus B, right? But now we know our slope, right? It's equal to negative one third. So we can plug that in. So Y is equal to negative one third x plus b, okay? Now what we have to figure out here is our y-intercept, our b right here. Okay, so in order to do that, we're going to have to plug in this point, negative one comma seven, into our x and y coordinates right here. Okay, so why are we doing that? Well, we already know what the slope of this line is, right? And we also know what one of the points are, negative one comma seven, all right? This is the only point along this perpendicular line that we know. So that's why we're gonna plug this point in into our perpendicular equation, okay? So again, the coordinates are negative one and seven, okay? So we're gonna plug in a negative one for x and a seven for y, right? So we're gonna plug a negative one there and a seven right here. Okay, so here we're gonna have seven is equal to negative one third times negative one plus b, all right? So then here we have seven is equal to negative one third times negative one is just positive one third, right? So positive one third plus b. So to solve for b right here, we'll subtract one third from both sides like that, right? These cancel out. So seven minus one third, that's equal to six and two thirds, okay? Or if you wanna write it as an improper fraction, just multiply these two together and then add the top one right here. So three times six is equal to 18. So 18 plus two is equal to 20, 
okay? And then the denominator stays the same, so we got a three right there, okay? So 20 over three is equal to B, okay? So we just figured out what B is equal to, right? So now we can plug it back right in there. So the perpendicular equation is going to be Y is equal to negative one third X plus 20 thirds. Okay, so we found our slope and our perpendicular equation, right? So let's get rid of some of this crap right here. Okay, now the next thing we're gonna do is find this point right here. And the way we're gonna do that is by solving for X and Y. Okay, so we basically have two unknown variables, right? So since we have two variables, that means we need two equations. So we have our perpendicular equation, right? This red one but we still have this original equation that was given to us, right? Which was y is equal to 3x. Okay, so y is equal to 3x. Okay, so I have two equations and two unknowns, right? So we can solve this using the substitution method, all right? So if you see something, we have y is equal to all this crap right here, and down here we have y is equal to this crap right here. Okay, so what I can do is just set this crap equal to this crap, right? Because both of these craps are equal to the exact same thing, y, okay? So since I know y is equal to 3x right here, I'm gonna plug in 3x for this y right here, okay? So then I'm gonna say 3x is equal to the rest of this equation right here, negative one third x plus 20 thirds. Okay, now one thing I'm gonna do here is multiply this whole equation by three, all right? Why am I gonna do that? Well, because I wanna get rid of these denominators. I don't like working with fractions and I doubt you like it too, okay? So we're gonna multiply everything by three because then that's gonna make these threes in the denominator cancel out, all right? So first of all, three times three X, that's going to be equal to nine X, okay? And here, three times negative one third X, right? We can write it out like that, three times negative one third x, well the three on top and the bottom cancel out, so then we're just left with negative one x on top, or in other words, just negative x. Okay, so we can write that as negative x. Okay, and then if we multiply by three over here, again, the three on the top and the bottom cancel out, so we're just left with this positive 20, right? So plus 20, okay? Now we're trying to solve for x, so let's get them all on the same side, so we'll add x to both sides, okay? these cancel out. So 9x plus x, that's equal to 10x. So 10x is equal to positive 20. All right, so solving for x right here, we'll divide both sides by 10. Okay, these cancel out. So then we get x is equal to 20 divided by 10, which is equal to 2. All right, cool. Now we know what x is equal to, right? We know the x coordinate of this intersection right here, right? So it should be at 2. Okay, so now that we know what x is equal to, now we can use this to solve for y. And we just have to plug it into one of these equations that we used. So I'm gonna use this one because it's obviously a lot easier to solve and work with, all right? So again, I'll just write it down here. y is equal to three x. But now we know what x is equal to, right? x is equal to two. So here we really have y is equal to three times two, which is equal to six, all right? So here we get y is equal to six. Okay, so again, we found our coordinates, right? X is equal to two and Y is equal to six. So the intersection is at two comma six, right? So these two lines intersect at two comma six. Okay, now the last thing we have to do, again, let's make some room, is just find the distance between the two points that we have now, okay? So the two points we have are negative one comma seven and two comma six, right? Now we know those two points. So how do you find the distance between two points? Well, you can use the distance formula, right? If you don't remember what that is, it's this equation right here. The square root of x of two minus x of one squared plus y of two minus y of one squared, okay? So all we have to do first is label our two points right here, okay? So Let's label this one as x of one, y of one, and we'll label this one as x of two, y of two, okay? Now we can plug these into our formula right here. All right, so we'll have the square root of, so first of all, x of two minus x of one, right? So that's gonna be two minus negative one, right? So we'll have two minus negative one, and that whole thing is squared. And we're gonna add that to y of two minus y of one. So here we're gonna have six minus seven, 
right? So here we have 6 minus 7, and that's squared also, okay? So then this is going to be equal to the square root of, here 2 minus negative 1, that's the same thing as 2 plus 1, right? So 2 plus 1 is equal to 3, so we get 3 squared, plus uh, here we get 6 minus 7, which is equal to negative 1, so negative 1 squared. So then, again, this is equal to the square root of uh, 3 squared, which is 9, plus negative 1 squared, which is 1, okay? So here, 9 plus 1 is equal to 10, right? So here, this is equal to the square root of 10, and the square root of 10 is approximately 3.16, okay? So the distance between these two points right here, or in other words, the distance from point A to this line over here is 3.16. So if you found the video helpful, definitely leave a thumbs up down below. And if you have any other questions or want to see any other examples, just let me know in the comment section below. Also, there's a couple playlists attached that I think you'll find helpful. So definitely check those out, and I'll see you there.